Greetings, myself uh, Dr. L. Maghalan Leo, Assistant Professor, uh, Department of ECE, School of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology, dim to b University. In this lecture, we are going to learn about PN junction diode, its construction, operation and volt ampere characteristics of it. So, semiconductor devices are mainly classified into two types, one is intrinsic semiconductor and extrinsic semiconductor. Pure form of semiconductor is known as intrinsic semiconductor and impure form of semiconductor is known as extrinsic semiconductor. In pure form of semiconductor that means intrinsic semiconductor number of holes and number of electrons are equal. But in the case of extrinsic semiconductor where we are adding the impurity depends on the impurity this number of holes or and the number of electrons may exceed than the other. So, in the case of uh, extrinsic semiconductor depends on the impurity it is added it can be classified into two types one is n channel semiconductor and another one is p channel semiconductor. In n channel semiconductor the majority carriers are electrons and the minority carriers are holes. So, here you can see here when an n type semiconductor can be produced means if we add a pentavalent impurity to pure semiconductor then we can get n type semiconductor. So, one example for uh, pentavalent impurity is arsenium. So, if this arsenium is added with pure silicon then it produces n type semiconductor. And the next type is uh, p type semiconductor. So, in the case of p type semiconductor a uh, trivalent impurity is added. So, in trivalent impurities only 3 valence electrons are available in the outer band whereas the silicon or germanium the pure semiconductor devices where 4 valence electrons are available and one example for trivalent impurity is gallium. So, if you add gallium with this pure silicon then p type material can be produced. So, now we are going to see how a p n junction can be formed. So, for forming the p n junction diode one single crystalline structure we are taking it and one side we are going to doped with p type impurities and the other side we are going to doped with n type impurities. So, here you can see here a single crystalline structure is taken where one type we are adding p type impurity and other type other side we are adding n type impurity. So, in the case of p type material where the majority carriers are holes and the minority carriers are electrons and in the case of n type material where the majority carriers are electrons and the minority carriers are holes. Now, you can see here a junction is there near the junction the excess holes in the p type material and excess electrons in the n type material starts to move across this junction. You know that electrons and holes are attracted towards each other while they are attracting they form a covalent band and they are in immobilized mode. So, due to this immobilized mode a depletion region is formed between p type and n type material junction. So, here you can see here the excess electrons from the n side is moved towards the p type material and excess holes in the p type material starts to move towards the n type material and a depletion region is formed and we call this depletion region as potential region and the other name for this depletion region is space charge region or transition region. Usually uh, the potential value or the potential barrier voltage for germanium is 0.3 volt and silicon is 0.7 volt. This potential barrier voltage is also called as cut-in voltage. So, here what we have done we have taken a single piece of crystalline structure one side we have added with p type impurities other side we had uh, we have added with n type impurities a junction is formed uh, by the movement of the excess electrons in the n type side and excess holes in the p type side and a depletion region is formed due to that the other free charge carriers which are available in the n side and uh, other free, free charge carriers which are available in the p side may not able to cross this junction. Why? Because this depletion region act as a barrier. And this is the circuit symbol of diode. You can see here two terminals and the names are anode and another one is cathode. So, the arrow mark indicates. So, here arrow mark is there. This arrow mark denotes the current conduction direction. Since the p-n junction diode is a unidirectional device, 
that means it can conduct only from anode to cathode, cathode to anode, it won't conduct, it remains in off position. So, this is the circuit symbol of PN junction diode and the next one we are going to see the operation of it. So, PN junction diode operations mainly depends on the external voltage we are applying. So, as we know that the external voltage has uh, two terminal, positive terminal and negative terminal. The way these terminals are connected with this PN junction diode, based on this, these operations can be classified into two types, one is forward bias and another one is reverse bias. So, in forward bias, P type, where the holes are the majority carrier, P type is connected with the positive terminal of the battery and the N type silicon is connected with the negative terminal of the battery. While we are doing this, what will happen? You can see here P type material is this side is there, N type is there and the depletion region is formed in between. So, now if you are applying voltage, okay. So, while we are applying voltage on this, you can see here the positive side is this side, positive terminal of the battery is here, negative terminal of the battery is here. And we know that same kind of charges ripple each other, opposite kind of charges attract each other. So, here in P type material, the holes are the majority carrier, so holes are positive charge type and here positive terminals are connected together. Due to that what will happen? This positive applied bias, okay, the positive bias pushed the holes towards the junction, okay. And on the other hand, if you are taking that N type material, okay, so where electrons are the majority carrier and here the negative terminal is connected with that. So, while we are applying the bias voltage, this electron starts to move towards the junction. Why? Because they ripple each other, negative and negative. So, ripple each other, they start to move towards the junction due to that, the depletion width is reduced. And if we further increase this bias, if we further increase this voltage, then what will happen? At one point, this potential barrier completely disappear and the electrons from the N side and the holes from the P side starts to move freely across the junction. So, this movement constitutes the current. So, that is the point where the diode starts to conduct and we call the voltage at which the diode starts to conduct as cut-in voltage. So, usually the cut-in voltage is nothing but the potential barrier voltage which we studied. So, the potential barrier voltage or the cut-in voltage of germanium is 0.3 volt and silicon is 0.7 volt. If you apply the voltage above 0.3 volt for the germanium in forward bias condition, it starts to conduct. And if you apply the voltage above 0.7 for silicon in forward bias condition, it starts to conduct. So, after that, if you further increase the voltage, the nodal happen, this current increases exponentially. So, the current of the PN junction diode increases exponentially. So, in forward bias, you are connecting positive terminal with the P type material and negative terminal with the N type material and while you are increasing this voltage, external bias voltage, at one point the potential barrier completely disappear or we can say that the depletion width gradually decreases at one point the depletion region completely disappear and where the electron and hole starts to move across the junction and it constitutes the current and we call this as forward bias working of PN junction diode. Now, we are going to see the reverse biasing condition. So, in reverse biasing condition, P type material where the holes are the majority carrier are connected with negative terminal and N type material where the electrons are the majority carrier are connected with positive terminal. So, here you can see here the opposite charges are connected. So, already I told you that, already we studied that opposite charges are attract each other and same kind of charges ripple each other, opposite kind of charges attract each other. So, here you can see here the operation if you are taking that, this is the P region and N region while we are connecting negative terminal with the P type material and positive terminal with the N type material, what will happen? They are attracted towards the terminal. So, here the in the positive terminal, okay, so in the P type material holes are the majority carrier, they are attracted towards the negative terminal and so what it, what it does means it starts to move towards outside. On the other hand, in the N type material where electrons are the majority carrier, 
where these electrons are connected with the positive terminal, they attract each other. So, this excess electron starts to move towards the positive terminal. While we apply this bias, this reverse biasing, it increases the depletion width. So, the depletion width increases at one point what will happen? The depletion width will enter into breakdown region. So, that means the completely disappears. So, there the sudden rise in the current value will be there. So, that is the operation in reverse bias. In reverse bias what we are doing means we are connecting positive terminal with the n type material and negative terminal with the p type material. While we are doing this the depletion width starts to move or starts to increase gradually and at one point it completely broken and we call this voltage as breakdown voltage. So, now we are depends on the operation what we studied we are going to draw the V i characteristics of the p n junction diode. So, in V i characteristics of the p n junction diode you can see here in the x axis we have taken voltage and the y axis we have taken current. So, in forward bias we know that we are going to connect positive terminal with the p type material negative terminal with the n type material. So, here the voltage which we are going to apply is positive voltage. So, it is marked forward voltage is marked in the x axis positive side and the forward current which is marked in y axis positive side. On the other hand in the reverse bias we are going to connect p type material with negative terminal of the battery and n type material with the positive terminal of the battery and where you can see here the V r and I r is marked. Why? Because here negative voltage we are applying. So, V r is marked in the left hand side negative x axis and the current is also going to be a negative value. So, we have marked here. So, if you are uh, drawing the diagram. So, in forward bias what we learned while we are applying the positive voltage okay, till it reaches the cut in voltage the current value is 0. So, you can see here till it reaches the cut in voltage current value is 0. Once the voltage is applied above this cut in voltage the current value will get it. That means the diode starts to conduct and already I told you that here the current increases exponentially. So, in this current value it increases exponentially after reaching the cut in voltage. And in the reverse bias condition if you are taking that where the positive terminal is connected with the n type material and negative terminal is connected with the p type material due to this the charge carrier starts to move towards the outside and it increases the depletion width because of this the charge carriers may not able to move till it reaches the breakdown voltage. So, until it reaches the breakdown voltage there is only a minority current available this minority current or we can say that the saturation current is produced due to the movement of the minority charge carriers. Okay. So, and uh, this is the minority uh, current value okay. once it reaches the breakdown voltage it gives sudden rise in the current value and it enters into breakdown region. So, that is all about V a characteristics of p n junction diode. So, in this lecture we learned about p n junction diode construction, operation in forward bias and reverse bias then V a characteristics of p n junction diode. Thank you.